Hi, and welcome to this Native Instruments workshop. I just released an EP that I composed exclusively with Complete 14, and I thought it would be great to share with you the different stages of its production, from the beginning of the project, so the genesis of the project, to uh, the final result, and I can actually show you a quick excerpt of it. So of course this is the final result, but it actually uh, started two years ago for a project called Sound of Complete. Uh, I've done with Native Instruments, I was asked to explore the sounds of the play series. So uh, this is what it looked like. I composed like maybe 10 or 11 different melodies with uh, the different sounds. This is the first one for instance. Okay, maybe another uh, example, maybe let's check this one maybe. Okay, so these uh, were the original melodies I composed with it. And some of these melodies uh, really stuck in my head. I was really liking them and wanted to bring them a bit further to create an EP out of it. So I wanted to uh, weave a narrative link uh, between the different melodies to create a story. Uh, you know, a story of colors and shapes and uh, emotions, you know, something abstract, something uh, suggestive. Uh, I wanted the uh, listener to have the freedom to imagine uh, its own story with what I was proposing with, with the EP. And so, before uh, jumping straight into the composition, uh, I wanted to, uh, to write a sort of brief, you know, uh, to frame the artistic expression, um, and also to have a better idea of the sound identity I was going for. So the brief was uh, made of two parts mainly. The first one was, um, I wanted to have a very minimalistic uh, arrangement, you know, uh, to have these melodies of the play series really shine, but at some moments uh, have a more complex arrangement to have a bit of a contrast, a bit like a, a concerto, where you have one instrument who sings on its own, and then the whole orchestra uh, responds to it. And I was really liking this idea of having uh, really bright and very dark parts uh, no, just uh, put together. And the second part of the brief was to have a sound that was electronic and cinematic um, and to blend the sounds of synthesizers like the original play series with uh, more piano and more organic sounds. Once I had my brief, I could actually start working and uh, I opened a first Ableton project, which is this one right here where I uh, gathered the different melodies of the play series I wanted to uh, bring further. So the first one I was really liking, I called it Might. So let's listen to it, it's this one here. Actually a bit, a bit more here. So might, uh, I had this idea of being really uh, strong, uh, really mighty, very powerful. And then, just after might, the second one is Cascades, here. Mm -hmm. 
which starts with this uh, very uh, dramatic sentence. You know, it, you understand something's happening. If might was powerful and mighty, uh, cascades is like a bit like, eh, something's wrong, something is happening, what is it? And then the second part of cascades goes like, <laughs> A bit frantic, a bit, uh, you know, it's a, like a race against the clock type of thing. And then uh, that leads me to digital rust. So digital, digital rust is uh, comprised of two parts, two melodies of the sound of complete. The first one is uh, this one. And then comes the melody. So it has this very steady and slow march, like it's a bit like, for me, um, digital rust is really hell. It's really like uh, we are down into a very dark, very moody place. And uh, there was another melody from the play series, which was really uh, com complementary to the first one. That's why I brought them together in one track, basically, um, which was this one. And you can hear we find the same pattern, the same cycle, the same uh, march of sorts, you know. And then, as for the first one, we find a melody. So same thing, very apocalyptic, very destroyed, very distorted. Uh, it's really this idea that uh, digital rust is basically what's, what is the world after uh, everything has been destroyed. So. It leads me into the fourth part, which is Lullaby for the Children We'll Never Have, uh, which sounds like this. Very lullaby. So it has both these elements of being uh, a bit, you know, it's like licking the wounds, it's uh, a bit soothing. But at the same time, it's very sad, very melancholic, because everything is destroyed, and now uh, it's like the acceptance of, of death, you know. Um, and I wanted initially to end the EP uh, with this. Um, so I had four parts, but uh, three of them, I mean, all of them, are different sounds, uh, different timbre, different identities to it. And I wanted to uh, homogenize. Uh, that. So I brought a, a piano because piano is a bit my instrument of heart. It's what I've learned music with, what I still compose with today. So I really wanted to bring a piano into the mix. And uh, the piano I brought was Noir from Native Instruments. So I'll let you show, uh, I'll show you what it is. So complete control here. I just opened uh, in my plugins, in my favorite plugins I, I, I have here, Complete Control brought it on the, uh, on the track, on the Ableton track. And Complete Control is a host. It lets, it lets me uh, host all the libraries from Native Instruments. So if I go here, I have everything I've got from Native Instruments. And amongst uh, all the things that Native Instruments has, there is several pianos, and there is Noir, which is maybe my favorite because it has very uh, distinct sound. So let me play it. With a lot of little noises, little details that bring a lot of, of life to the sound. So um, let me close this and this. So Noir uh, looks like this, and the main reason I chose it, apart from its uh, basic sound, was uh, that you have two parameters here, color and tonal shift, that lets me um, shape the sound of the piano like I want, depending on what moment of the EP I'm in. For instance, this is a bit normal sound, but if I turn color all the way to the left, 
you have this very strange and very muffled, very intimistic piano sound. And if I bring it all the way to the right, very bright, very radio uh, piano sound. And tonal shift does a bit the same thing, but a bit different. Uh, all the way to the right, it's very muffled, soft. And to the left, it is very bright. It has almost no bass anymore. And so I just move these two parameters uh, depending on what I needed as a, uh, for, for the sound of the piano, depending on the moment. So for instance, when I transcribed uh, might, which uh, original sound sounded like this. So I transcribed it to this. You can see I have a very uh, sort of bright piano sound, whereas if I go maybe here, it's very muffled because it's another part, another moment. And uh, this goes uh, like this all throughout the EP with different settings for the, co for the color and the tonal shift uh, parameters. So this is what I did. I took the different parts and transcribed them into piano. Uh, for instance, Cascades goes like this. And Lullaby is this one. And I really like this, uh, you know, this. This chord progression is very simple. It's actually G minor, then F, then B uh, flat major, then uh, D major, left hand, arpeggios, and then on top of the arpeggio, you draw a line, you draw a melody. Like this for the rest of the lullaby. Um, so now we have four different parts transcribed to uh, a same piano sound that I vary, I, mean, I make variations of it uh, with the color and the tonal shift uh, parameters from Noir. Um, but then I was missing something, I was missing an intro and an outro. So I compose this with Noir as well, uh, the intro, because you know, it was beginning with might. It was very powerful, very straight in your face with, you know, this uh, very distinctive... Uh, which is very powerful. And I wanted to go in to fade in the EP a bit more subtly and to bring, uh, to draw uh, a different color at the start. So I started with this arpeggio. So this arpeggio here, is a F sharp, so it's for me it's very bright, it's very white, it's very snowy, uh, very shimmering, hence the name of the first track, I called it Shimmer. And, and this idea you know, of something really innocent, very, very, uh, very bright. And then I, once I have drawn this color with the arpeggio, I can bring in this left hand. No, uh, I just basically play around the uh, the scale, so... Once again, here I have my color, and with my left hand I paint a melody line with a bass, basically, uh, and this is what brings us into the story. And I used the same theme for the outro because I wanted, uh, in the end, we were, if I remind you, on the lullaby, 
very sad, very melancholic just after the destruction of digital rest. And I wanted to uh, end the EP on a more uh, ho on hope uh, tone, you know, more, 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 I don't know, something made more positive. And uh, so I used the same thing as the intro, but transposed to, to uh, C, because C for me has a more warm color. If, if F sharp is very bright, very white, very shimmering, uh, C is more like very end going like so yes yeah, very sunny very very hopeful and this is what I wanted for the end and to have this sort of cycle between the beginning and the end so now I had my intro four parts and my outro all with noir and uh, I was basically ready uh, to compose the rest of the arrangement because I had this skeleton of sort, which was very, very uh, clean, and and, uh, and I knew I could build things on that a bit more uh, easily. So let's open the second project, which is actually the final project. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of new stuff here. We have still noir, the same tracks uh, I showed you just before, but now we have drums, bass, instruments guitars and FX with lots of tracks uh, inside them. So uh, let's begin with Shimmer, uh, which is the intro of the EP. And uh, it begins like this. We can hear uh, the piano fading in. And in the background, you can hear the pad growing. This one. This is a very destroy sound. So the idea here is really to to uh, paint a color uh, at the intro, you know, to to let the people, the uh, listener, uh, know what is the color of the EP, what is the style, what is the genre, what I'm trying to paint as a landscape, basically. Uh, so we have noir, uh, and uh, the main aspect of this first part is Saturacint, which is a preset uh, of Massive X I've designed myself. So let me close just the mix part and open uh, once again Complete Control. And inside Complete Control, you will see I have Massive X open, which is a big uh, software synth uh, from Native, which looks like this. <laughs> This is the final sound, but actually I uh, designed it a bit, so let me uncheck some boxes and put that in solo mode. Um, so, it started with this sound up, just a first uh, oscillator. So very boring. Then I added some uh, noise to it. To open this, uh, the uh, highs in the sound, then I have a filter which does a lot. Then two distortions, two different distortions, to you know have a bit more guts, a bit more you know a destroy destruction in the sound because I wanted a really analog style, very dis destroyed uh, sound. But this was still not enough, so I actually uh, used Supercharger, which is a compressor. But the thing I did with Supercharger is that I supercharged it. Uh, I put the compressor all the way to the right, so compression at its maximum. And so it destroys the sound so much that it, it has some gaps into it, like... You can hear. So supercharger, really nice to supercharge the sound. And then um, the final thing I added was bite, 
which is on every track of my EP almost. Uh, it's a bit crusher, so it uh, crushes bits and also lowers the sample rate. And it acts like a, to add that noise. And a bit of saturation as well. And then some EQ. And the sound is this one. Okay, so this is a pad which is called Saturescent, and I used it quite a lot in the project uh, in the beginning and a different parts, um, so yes. So once I had painted my world uh, with noir and Saturescent, I could actually bring some heroes to the world, some, some melodies, some stuff. So this is what this part is about. Pattern of noir. This one. But I layered this with a bass uh, to bring a bit more sub uh, to it. So the bass is actually made with Monarch. Let me uh, show you. Just a big, big bass. Right, so Monarch is um, a very useful synth. Uh, it's actually a recreation, it's a virtual analog synthesizer. Uh, it's, it's inspired by the Mini Moog from Bob Moog, which is a very famous synth. Very versatile, also it doesn't have lots of parameters for a synth, but I used it a lot. Uh, all my basses are made with Monarch. And to bring this really dirty uh, vibe to Monarch, I used two things. Uh, dirt, which is a, let me remove bite. Dirt, which is a distortion, okay, a, a bit like a distortion pedal. Here. To bring these harmonies in. And then, the second thing I use, which is important, is also bite, like I always use, bite. Um, and to bring this really noisy stuff, to make the bass even bigger, you know, to make the sub really, really big and really, really low. Um, so, if I make you listen with uh, Noir, just a layer. And then on top of Noir and the bass, I have a Super 8, which sounds like this. So this is basically just a preset from uh, Super 8, which is uh, another synth from Native Instruments, vintage synth. A really nice preset, Dragonflight, I called it. Uh, and then I also have Aftermath. And when the bass was really uh, here to bring some lows and to bring some, some guts to the sound, Aftermath and Dragonfly bring the space to it, you know, it, it helps widen the sound. So if I listen, and Aftermath, sorry, uh, I didn't show you, is made with uh, Ashlight, um, which is a fantastic instrument, it's very cinematic, as you can hear. Really, really useful to paint uh, some landscapes. Yes, and so Ashlight, together with Super 8, widens the sound of Noir. It adds a bit of freebab to it even. And then I have the bass. And this is an example of how I layer different instruments and different um, presets of different types of sound uh, to help me shape the world I want, I want to do. So a very broad and very wide sound in this example. Okay, so this goes uh, for Shimmer, and then we have another part of Shimmer here, which is a bit similar. With the same instruments, the bass, Noir, and uh, Super 8 and Aftermath playing which brings me to uh, Might, uh, which is the second track of the EP. 
and starts like this with piano solo once again to have this concerto uh, form and then several things happen So as you can hear, I'm starting with the piano on its own, uh, very bright, uh, very present, and then I, I cut the highs of the piano by uh, actually moving the color and the tonal shifts parameters from noir, okay, there's two parameters I showed you before. Listen. Very muffled and I do this because I need some space for the bass to, to, to speak because the bass I used is not just a sub here it's actually uh, doing a melody and this melody is done with Rick and Baker bass uh, most of the sound comes from the bass itself uh, so let me play it's a very jumpy uh, melody And I used it because I was really digging the sound of the of the Rick and Baker, and I thought it was a great idea to to uh, have this bass come atop of noir because before it was really low, very dark. Now it comes atop, you know, to to shape a bit of a different story. And in the same time, you can hear, I let the drums enter. So a little explanation on how I compose drums, um, because right now, as you can see, it's just audio. Okay, so if I solo these drums, you have the kick here, and then a rim. So uh, how I do uh, most of the time is that I just use a new MIDI track, like right here, and then I go and I load Complete Control, uh, which is the host for everything Native Instruments. Uh, and then you can see there is three, uh, three little tabs here. So the first one is for all the libraries, for all the instruments. The second one is for loops, which are uh, short bits of audio, you know, like a, basically like a, a, a rhythmic pattern or something like this. Uh, and then we have one shots, and one shots, one shots are just samples. You know, for instance, if I uh, choose drums here, if I filter and use drums, and then I use uh, kick as the, my keywords, and close the filtering section, I have access to a very, very, very long uh, list of kicks. I can just choose one. Maybe, um, yeah. Sorry, I was not so loud. Okay. Okay, maybe, okay, this one is nice. I double click on it, and now it loads inside a complete control. And now that it is loaded inside complete control, I can play with it on the keyboard, and it actually pitches the sample. Which is very handy when you design drums because it lets you play with the drums in a melodic way and add some variations to it. Like, and also you can see on the screens of the complete control, it lets me access to some parameters. For instance, I can use um, a drive. And also a filter, if I want to use a low pass for instance. So it's very, very useful, it's a very useful kit uh, to design drums. And once I have chosen my sound, I can just hit record, for instance. So I click on metronome, record. And once I have this done, I can actually quantize it a bit. And 
And then what I usually do uh, to save a bit of, of processor, of CPU uh, you know, power, is that I free this. So it freezes the track. And then I flatten it in audio. So it removes complete control, removes the drums, and gets just the audio I've, I've created, which is very, very handy for drums because then you can, you can cut it, you can move it a bit, a bit easier. Sorry. So this is basically how I do most of the drums. So you can see if I take, for instance, this little moment here. Um, just remove the metronome. We have the kick, we have some snares. And then we have some i-hats, what I call i-hats. Which lets me uh, show you another way of that I design drums. Uh, sometimes I use actual uh, instruments, uh, actual drum machines, sort of. Uh, so this is 40's very own drums that I have loaded on this track here. And you can see I can open Complete Control and it shows the interface of uh, 40's very own, very own drums, which is a a instrument made in partnership with Noah Shabib, which is a producer of Drake, and it's obviously a very good instrument. Um, and so, what is very nice with this is that instead of having just one sound pitched on the instrument, on the keyboard, I now have access to uh, different elements of the kick, of the kit, sorry. What is very handy is that you have different colors for it because Complete Control is connected. Obviously, the keyboard Complete Control is connected to the software Complete Control. They talk to each other. So the keyboard knows what element is what. So for instance, blues are the different uh, i-hats and oranges are toms, yellows are snares and rims, and red is to kick. So yes, so I would just then record stuff like this in MIDI, uh, like you can see here, my little pattern, which is a very subtle uh, I-hat pattern. Uh, yeah, so these are the two main ways I compose drums, either with samples uh, from the library of Native, either with instruments, and then I just play them like a, in, a, in a kit uh, uh, way. So uh, the drums goes very, uh, very, soft in the beginning, then I have a bit of more rhythmic part with snares and, and i hats and then in the end of my I actually have a lot of stuff going on with the uh, snares and rims doing a lot of work and this is all just sound, different sounds, different audio samples layered on top of each other. Uh, so yes, let me bring back to the beginning of Might, because I was here. So, bass and drums enter. Then at the end of this little moment, I keep the same uh, chords with Noir, but then I just repeat the G and Noir almost uh, is a percussive instrument right now, hitting the same note to keep the rhythm. On top of it, I have drums and bass. And you can hear how important the bass and drums sound together, this groovy uh, style. It is very important uh, that you have a bass and a drum that work together and that lets you groove to each other. If you, if you don't want to move when you listen to your drums and, and bass, it's maybe something's off. And um, I just layered uh, Monarch to the drums, actually, to the kick drum. And I just uh, render it in audio to save a bit of, of resources. And on top of the drums and the bass, and noir, which is a bit like the ground of the uh, of this moment. I have a melody, which is made with Oberbrass. Let me 
So this little melody is made with uh, a preset from the Analog Dream uh, play series. So this is one of the instruments from the play series, which is a very nice a suite of instruments where you have only two layers, layer A and layer B, and some macros to adjust the sound. So very uh, hand, uh, you know, hands-on type of sound. Um, and it uses it used to sound like this. Let me deactivate all of the effects. <laughs> So a bit, a bit boring uh, as it, it was, you know, I, I wanted to bring it a bit further. So I used first a reverb. It's subtle, but it, it helps to not have a very dry sound. Then uh, I used a delay, which is replica. Adding a bit of stereo movement to the sound, really subtle. Once again, it I don't have to overdo it. You know, really stay uh, a bit simple, and then bite. Uh, sorry, which adds a bit of. A bit of saturation to you know, make the sound a bit more round. Then I have a phaser uh, which is made of with phases. This is without, and this is with. I really like this phasing effect, you know, brings a lot of uh, psychedelic, psychedelic vibes. And then I used two EQs uh, to really, really help shape the sound, bring all the highs up to have this very radio sound. And you can hear now that I, I have activated the both EQs. How much work is Byte doing? If I activate it once again. So yeah, this is how I designed uh, this sound, Oberbrass it's called, um, and which takes the melody on this moment. So, um, after this little part with Oberbrass and everything, uh, there is another part here. Which it's a bit the same construction, but instead of uh, having the melody made with Oberbrass, it's actually Noir doing it. And the same instruments on top of it, so the bass and the drums. And then we have this break here, where I used the same synth uh, from the beginning, which is called the dress synth. Once again, with this idea of homogenizing the sound of the EP to have some some uh, colors that come in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, you know, to have this continuous flow of, of music. And then little little uh, thing here is that before going to the drop, before going to the final part, which is very full, you have uh, a lot of drums, plus a bass, plus a piano. So before going to this, and after the break, which is also a bit full, a lot of harmonies, lots of, of stuff going on, I actually used a bit of silence you know, to have a break, to have like some sort of, of breath, breathing, uh, just before going to the, uh, to the main part here. The same instruments, 
Just the bass is a bit different, uh, instead of being very muffled or very filtered, now it's very bright. A uh, simple thing, I just opened the cutoff frequency, so if I let you listen... So this is the sound uh, with the, the cutoff the cut frequency here. If I lower it... Very, very filtered. And then... So I, I, I opened the filter because in this part I needed the bass to be uh, really bright too, so we can hear it uh, in, in the mix, you know. And to have this very electronic, very uh, almost electric sound. Once again, silence here. So we can drop. Then I add another instrument, which we also already talked about, which is overdress. Doing the same phrases, the same sentences as before. You know, before it was this. Same thing, just one octave uh, higher. And then we arrive at the end of might, but before going into cascades, I added another little part for uh, might, which uses the same instruments. Uh, so we have the bass. Let me show you. On top of it, we have uh, some instruments here. Same thing, still saturated. On top of that, I have avant-garde, which is a new sound. And Avant-Garde uh, plays a little arpeggio to have this little echo from the intro, you know, we are in the intro we were doing this. And now we have another arpeggio, a bit the same thing but a bit lower. And Avant-Garde is actually uh, made with this uh, preset from Piano Colors. Piano Colors is a very interesting instrument. It's a, it's a, a piano uh, instrument but it has lots of presets uh, with very different sounds than on piano. For instance, this one, which has a very uh, almost chime uh, uh, sound. A bit like a, a prepared piano, if you're familiar with this, you know, where, where you hit the strings of piano with different things. And I use this sound in particular because it was very opening, very bright, and was a good companion to this destroyed pad. So together it's this, with the bass on. Playing a melody with the basses. So once again using the Rick and Baker from the beginning. Once again, I'm using still the same instruments, just with different contexts. For instance, uh, Saturacent, which was a bit um, filtered before. No, it's very, very open. Okay. To help bring this power into the, into the music. Then after the resolution, we go into cascades. And so uh, after might, which is a very uh, powerful, very very uh, strong uh, track uh, with a lot of stuff going on, I wanted to uh, start cascades with only the piano, you know, to, in contrast to it, to bring this idea of, of something very full and then something very minimalist. And so cascades start with this sentence. Which is a bit like a warning, you know, if Might was very uh, sure of itself, very dominant, very powerful, Cascade is like, yeah, something's wrong, it's like a warning. And so, after this sentence, I just harmonize it.
even more. And then, this little chase. Where I just play with tension and resolution. Growing, growing the tension, you know. And then, for the resolution, I open the sound. And here, you can hear that it is the same pattern as the intro, the big like... With broad strokes, uh, you can find them here as well. And to open the sound even more, same technique at the intro, I bring the bass in. And Super 8 and Aftermath. And the idea, the straightening here is like, here we are very compressed, very uh, on a chase, you know, running. It's almost like the plane is lifting off. And then, here, it's lift off. In the air. With the same pattern, very rhythmic, and on top of it, I layer actual drums uh, to help tell the story of something very really rapidly uh, going on. And I used a groove from Sekis. Let me show you. So Sekis is a other instrument based on samples uh, with a lot of different rhythms to it. So you have this groove. You just have to print one note to have the groove. And on top of that groove from Tekis, I use another groove from Tekis here, a bit different. Okay, and together they sound like this. To really help that really uh, repetitive pattern from Noir. Then piano solo once again. It's the same uh, pattern than from the beginning, just with a repeated uh, style. Uh, whereas in the intro it was just like more of a sentence. Now it's more of a rhythm. leads me into digital rust. So, uh, digital rust now is very, very dark, very apocalyptic. So uh, all the things I've done here are here to um, strengthen that idea of something completely destroyed, completely uh, into ashes, you know. Uh, so, the instrument uh, that I used for this is mainly this one, which is called Mountain Origins, uh, which is a sound from the Sounds of Complete as well. I didn't change it. I just added some effects to it. So let's hear uh, what it does without effects. Maybe here. Uh, let me... yes. So a very dry sound, it raises flute sound. And I wasn't really liking this flute sound, I thought it wasn't really fitting in the uh, sound identity of the EP. So I transformed it, and to transform it I used mainly two things. Bite, once again, uh, 
lot of distortion, a lot of crunch. I love this sound. It almost sounds like a guitar even now. Um, it's a bit, a bit uh, very, yes, very uh, crushed. And then on top of bite, I use Rome, which is a reverb I like a lot, uh, with a preset which is fantastic, Dark Impact. So the little stutter of the sound is actually made with bite, it's not a, a bug or anything, it's just that little crush sound I am, I am, I'm liking a lot. And I layered these melodies with another instance of Montaigne's origin, so it's the same preset from, uh, where is it? Up. Uh, it's here. The same preset from uh, Ethereal Earth, which is a uh, play series instrument, as you can see here. And this one is a bit different. I didn't use Byte in the same way, I just use Rome. Uh, and Rome does a lot of work here. If I remove Rome, you can hear this uh, the bass, that the bass is the uh, flute I was talking about. You can still hear it, but when you add Rome, it takes a whole new level. Love this. Very broad and very dark at the same time. So, uh, Mountain Origins lows and Mountain Origins highs together sound like this. So, for Digital Rust, I really wanted to, uh, to, to compose this sort of uh, funeral march, really, uh, with this steady and slow rhythm, like it's a march of death coming for you. And you have this first part with Mountain Origins, which is a bit soft in some way, very dark, very apocalyptic, but still soft somehow, with this very high-pitched uh, singer, uh, which is like the last sing before dying, uh, and then... We have these melodies from Carpenter, which is super, super nice and destroyed. Once again, it's a sound from the Blaze series, uh, from the modular icon, uh, which is called Carpenter. The preset is called Carpenter. And this is basically untouched. It's just the way I used it for the Blaze series video. But I did some things to it. I added some layers. I call this guitar's growl because it's what it, it means for me. Um, and in the beginning, the sound of the guitar was like this. Let me deactivate this. So, just a guitar. With a bit of, of uh, envelope to it. And uh, I added two instances of guitar rig, which is a... Um, a host also, a bit like complete control, but instead of having instruments, uh, you have uh, pedal effects for guitars, basically. So you have access to a lot, a lot of different uh, presets uh, that you can see here, and a lot, a lot of different modules. Uh, you can also find byte in there, uh, EQs and echoes and flanges, and whatever you want. And I use this preset, which brings me from there to this. And then another one. And I use the same uh, preset for the left uh, track. So this is on the right side of the stereo. And this is the same 
stuff a bit different on the left side, so together I have this wide sound of guitars and then on top of that I have basses so I have uh, the sub from Monarch, still the same sub on top of it I have Rick and Baker that's the bass from the beginning and another Rick and Baker but just in a uh, render in audio to bring some highs so this plus this uh, guitars plus Carpenter plays the melodies and help bring this little movement but I felt it wasn't enough so I actually um, use some FX, or I call that FX, but it's not really FX. All these little noise to help widen the stereo and also uh, enhance the impact and the rise up after the impact, you know, you know. Impact, rise, impact, rise. It's like a hammer hitting the nails on the coffin, you know, it's really like, ah, you are dead and you're not going out. <laughs> it's just me. Uh, hitting on the table, for instance, for this sound. Yeah, so this is just me hitting the table. This is just me hitting the keyboard. Ah, sorry. Like this. Um, and then I have some um, microphone hits. I just hit my microphone and then I rub it a bit. So hitting, rubbing. With of course a lot of effects on it, like distortions and stuff. Uh, but yeah, the idea here is just to have this movement added to uh, the rest of the elements. It goes like this for the rest of Digital Rust. Then I have the final part of Digital Rust. Same elements, I just play uh, Mountain Origins a bit differently. Uh, instead of using melodies, I use chords, um, basically. Before uh, going into Noir and the last uh, part, which is Lullaby for the children we never have, you can hear uh, I used a very uh, intimistic and very soft and very close uh, piano. Uh, or actually, it's still Noir, but it's just a variation of Noir with a color and tonal shift uh, parameters that let me bring the piano a bit more close to me. because it's a, it's a lot of contrast uh, from this. It's very violent, very, very, very loud. And then you enter in this, it's like, it's soothing. It's a balm uh, for your skin, you know, it's licking the wounds. So it goes on, and then... At the end of Lullaby, I have a little transition where I come from, uh, you know, using this. And I need to transition to uh, Ashen Soil, which is the outro, which has this pattern, which is the same pattern at the beginning, but just in C. So uh, to transition between Noir, uh, uh, I mean, between the Lullaby and Ashen Soil, was to use the same chord progression uh, that the lullaby uses. But instead of using melody on the right hand, I use the same pattern, uh, the same arpeggio uh, for the lullaby. Because it lets me blend the two, it lets me blend um, the lullaby and ashen soil. Going 
up to the scale of C. Now we are in C. And once again, same instruments as the intro, uh, but with a bit different color. We are not in, C, in uh, F sharp, we are in C. And the other instruments the bass is still the same, but such a synth with, uh, which was very dark and moody in the beginning. They're very low. No, I want to conclude the EP. I want to conclude uh, with a, a brighter, happy uh, moment. So uh, such a synth is actually much brighter, for instance, here. This for the end. Very happy. So this is how the EP ends and it's also how the workshop ends. Uh, I hope you liked it and that you've learned some stuff along the way. Thanks for watching.